So one of the more common questions that people ask me is uh, something along the lines of, hey Stretch, I just bought a welder and I want to make me some money building trailers. Is this a good idea? No, it isn't, and here's why. Uh, what I've learned in my years of welding and in doing commercial work is uh, the only way to make money on trailers is to do uh, like custom stuff like we're building a series of fairly large very high-end barbecues right now or to do repair work. The caveat to repair work is you know if you've got some flimsy junkomatic like $600 piece of crap you track your supply trailer or whatever and whoever owns it has absolutely destroyed the thing that you know they're not gonna want to pay you 500 bucks for you know the 300 dollars materials you have to build in like a day or half a day or whatever the, how much of that time you can buy for that amount you know that adds up to 500 bucks pretty quickly but they're just gonna go to tractor supply and buy another piece of crap 600 dollar trailer destroy that one as well and then sell their current piece of junk trailer on craigslist for 300 bucks to some guy so but what about building them well this is sort of a great example of uh, why this doesn't really work out very well either. Now, let's see, the barbecues we're building, you know, the axle's gonna go under the firebox on them, so it's an odd size, and we can't use standard sized axles because then the firebox, you have to walk like feet out and come back around. It's really inconvenient, nobody wants to do that. So, we cut down an axle. Uh, we buy axles for retail prices. Maybe you get a little bit of a discount if you go to the trailer place and you tell them you want like a bunch of axles. Uh, but then, you know, bring them out here, cut them down, weld them, put these plates over to reinforce and redistribute the stress because if we just weld around them like we did, that's going to cause a stress riser. So that's what these plates are for. And then we go and pay retail prices for these brackets and stick them on here at, uh, at essentially a tradesman rate for skilled labor. Here's the way how this works at the factory. Uh, they talk to their American or Chinese manufacturer of axles and they have them do a custom run of these things and they pay less for those than the wholesale cost for the retail stores that sell these. And uh, when they need these brackets, they buy an entire container load of them from China for like three cents a piece or something. And then the person who puts these together has a jig so he can do 50 of them in an afternoon. And the only two welds he knows how to do are like a flat, you know, fillet weld like this in here to attach this. And they pay the guy like 11 bucks an hour and he's a high school kid and he thinks it's great, which for him it is. The problem is, uh, you don't have any of the jigs, you don't have uh, that repetition down, you, you're paying retail prices for everything. So you can see how this adds up and this is just the axle. Then there's the frame of the trailer as well. Let's say we're talking about a generic like, you know, uh, I don't know, just a two inch angle iron, like eighth inch thick generic thing. Well, you know, at the factories, the way this works is they buy this steel by the rail car load, or the rail car load, or at the very least by the semi load. And then they've got, you know, jigs set up and stops on their saw. And then another $11 an hour semi skilled labor just goes and cuts like 20 pieces at once. And then uh, a couple stations down the line is the assembly worker who also makes 11 bucks an hour and is a kid out of high school, optimistically. And, uh, and all he knows how to do is that one little weld right there. He's got a jig, he puts in two pieces of angle iron. Psh, psh. For comparison, again, you're paying retail for everything, maybe at a slate discount very optimistically, and you have to take the time to design this and figure out exactly which way this piece goes and how long it is, and, uh, and then you get it in there. And for comparison, at the factory, there's someone who's valuing their time at like a third or a quarter or a fifth or whatever of what you are, and they've made like 10 complete, you know, widgets on that particular trailer in that amount of time. So, uh, and, and all of this leads out, le completely leaves out the liability aspect of this as well, which is if you build your nice utility trailer with a 3,500 pound axle and you sell it to your, your brother-in-law, Billy Bob or whatever, and he puts 3,800 pounds of concrete on it and then all of his tools and then a wheel falls off because the axle broke, now you get sued. So, yeah. This is why uh, the only trailers I really build around here are for myself. People will tell you, oh, you know, I want the best. I want better quality than Storebucks. We've all seen and fixed and heard the horror stories of a lot of store-bought trailers. And, uh, but they won't actually want to pay for it. You know, their idea of that is, you know, if they can go to, to, the, to the store and buy something with, you know, like porosity filled joints and whatnot for $3,000, then yours should cost $3,500. And really it costs you like 2,800 bucks in material and then three weeks to build. So this is why, like I said, the only trailer work I do is for myself because uh, it's worth for commercial operation 
spending a little bit of time and making things right, um, which the average consumer maybe, maybe not is willing to pay for. And I do repair work on larger trailers like cattle trailers and things along those lines. And I do custom stuff like these barbecues. So that's your lesson of the day. Sorry to be a downer, but that's just the way it is. Thanks for watching, guys.